Hi and welcome to another tutorial from home. So today we're looking at the toaster pop motion graphic tutorial. This is going to be a little less motion and more graphic in this, but we go over some important processes in this tutorial, some important workflows that I think are good for you to know, as well as some key information for grease pencil, especially with 3D objects. So we have our cube here and we're not going to delete the cube here because the, the cube is actually useful to have for us to have here. But first, before we edit the cube, we're going to, to look at the camera. So this is an isometric image. So I'm going to show you how to set up your camera and your scene so that you can work in isometric pure. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to, we're going to go to our numpad and we're going to press five. All right? And once we press five on our numpad, this changes the view from um, the perspective view to the orthographic view. And orthographic in this instance simply means that the there is no vanishing point for perspective lines. So the all lines that make up the 3D space are assumed to never have a time where they connect. They are perfectly parallel on the X, Y, and Z. And you can see that changes the way the cube looks as well. All right, as we look at the cube, you can see that there's perspective, the lines, if you look at the grids, the grids are moving towards a, a point where they converge. Whereas this, the lines are moving to a point where there is no convergence, they're perfectly parallel. And the isometric requires this. Next, we're gonna go into our camera. So we go to our camera and press zero. We see that we have our cube in the center. We want to change the um, properties of our camera. So we're gonna go to our camera um, point here and we have perspective here. We're gonna make it back, turn it back to orthographic. And then we're gonna go to our transform I want to make sure that our rotation on the x-axis is 50.8 and we want to make sure that our z-axis is 45 and that our y is 0. Good. And if we move the camera along the z to put the cube in perspective, uh, we'll put the cube in focus, sorry. So I use perspective here, um, not to cause confusion. Cool. And then we can just bring down our cube or we can carry our camera back a little bit by just scaling it It'll just come out of there a bit and yeah we just scale down our cube instead that may be more logical cool <coughs> and now we have a true isometric um scene ready to start on so the camera um options are once again you want to make the transformation rotation 50.8 and the Z for X and for the rotation for Y 45 degrees. So we have our camera. We have our camera in isometric orthographic mode um, or orthographic isometric mode. And now we can begin to edit our cube. Right. And with the dimensions clearly outlined, because we're in the origin of our um, scene, we can see where the X and Y converge. It's a lot easier for us to sort of understand, you know, what, transform, what transforms we are to make. So first, we need to make the cube along, stretch along the Y axis. So I'm in edit mode, just stretching out this cube a little bit. So we have it here and we're going to squash it uh, along the X axis. Uh, to something like so I think this is about right about here maybe going a bit more go and squash it slightly more along the Y cool yeah I think this is about right can move along the X and I'm just using G um, and X to select nodes and to to move them to select um the not nodes, the vertices and to move them along the X and Y axis to model this. Cool. Next we're going to um, duplicate this box. Good. I'm going to move it down along the Z. Cool. And then once we do that, we're going to hit Shift and Z to go to wireframe mode. We're going to select all these edges here. I'm going to hit G and pull this up along the Z. Good, then we're just going to scale out All right, with S and move it down with G. Cool, 
and then we can sort of just move it along the y-axis as well so that we have the base of this cool let's just select it once more let's make this spin a bit thinner something to the effect of this cool then we can duplicate it one more time press G and Z I'll press shift and D move it along the Z axis and then we can just bring this down to be slightly larger cool now we can push shift and Z to come back into solid solid mode and we can see how it looks I'm gonna move it along the Y a bit something to this effect let's see this is about right yeah cool so we have our base now so what we're going to do is to start to curve the edges of our box so we're going to go to edit mode by pressing tab i'm going to go to edge select mode we're going to select these two back edges here i'm going to hit Control and b and that is the shortcut for the bezel mode and that's going to bezel our edges right here cool and for us to make the, be bez the bezels um, a less polygon like and more curve like i'm going to use the middle of a mouse button and i'm just going to scroll up and that will give us more sec sections which will in turn give us more of a curve effect and if we want the curve not to be as pronounced we can bring it up and i think this is about okay I'm press enter to um apply the changes and we are good to go cool so now that we have that we're going to curve the edges of the base as well so let's go ahead and just hit shift and z i'm going to select these edges here along the side along the side along the side along the side here i'm going to hit Control and b like we did before and we're going to curve these edges cool even though we're not going to see the back i like to do it for completeness and press tab then we click shift and z once more or let me just save this as tutorial tutorial and just save good and we click shift and z to go back to solid mode and this is looking good right? it's looking a lot like the preview already so for the next step we're going to press tab Go to edit mode i'm going to go ahead and select this top box here that's not been curved i'm going to duplicate that with shift and d then press g and z press g and z to lift this up cool i'm going to go ahead and select this edge here which is along the x-axis we're going to press g and z and i'm going to flatten this a bit then i'm going to select all of these edges here i'm going to press e for extrude i'm going to extrude up Cool. then I'm going to select all of these sections right here so I'm going to hit shift Z to make sure that we select everything good and with that we're going to hit P and P gives us the option to separate so we want to separate this from the mesh below it and we're going to separate by selection so now this mesh and this mesh are not joined together so it allows for easier editing. Then we're going to hit Shift and Z again. I'm going to put G and Z. I'm going to bring it down. Then I'm going to put G and X to move along the X axis. Cool. And for us, for us to get a better view, we're going to see if we can go on the top. So I'm going to press 7 on my numpad. Good. And I'm going to hit S and Y to scale it on the Y axis. Cool. Let's go back to zero to go back to our camera. I think this is looking okay. And go seven again. Good. Then we're going to duplicate this. Press G and X. Bring it to the side. And um, to see how it looks. I think I my toaster slots are slightly larger. So let's increase the size a bit. About this size here. And delete this one duplicate it and we have here oh I think this looks about right 
Good. Press Z on a numpad. Then we're gonna go ahead and join these together with Control and J, and that's going to join the two meshes as one. Cool. And we can see how deep it goes because we hit Shift and Z. We can see it goes this deep. We want it to go down a bit deeper. I think that's okay. Yeah. I think that's deep enough. Right, we can even move this back a little bit. G on the Y. Just bring it back slightly. Y. Good. Then we're going to go ahead and go to our modifiers tab on the right. That's this wrench. And then we're going to go to Boolean. And that's in generate. So you have modifier, generate, generate the form, physics. And we're going to go to Boolean in generate. Good. So now that we've gone to Boolean, we're going to select. Oh, I have the wrong thing selected. We're going to select this first, sorry. Then we're going to go to Boolean. And then we're going to select the object that's going to do the cutting. And we can see what's going to happen here in the object itself. Good. If we hide this right now, we can see how it's going to cut it. It's going to look something to this effect. Cool. I'm going to hit shift and Z to see how it looks in the solid mode. This looks okay. Not too bad. I will bring it up a bit though. So I'm going to press Alt and H to bring it up. To, um, to unhide it. And then I'm going to hide it once more time. I think it can go up a bit more. G and Z. And uh, I'm going to say hide once more. Right. This is looking like it. Yeah, this looks a bit more like it, like our preview. Cool. So I think this is what we're going to use. I'm going to hit Alt and H to hide it. And then we're going to go down to this drop down on our right and hit apply. Good. Now we're just going to move this to the front. So I'll move this G and Y to the front here. And then I'm going to scale it. Oh, before I scale it, sorry, we're going to go object set origin to center of mass volume good and then i'm going to hit s and x to scale it on the x-axis good we're just going to go ahead and come out of camera mode and we're just pressing six four and two to see what it looks like and eight so that we can go to the front we press g to bring it down on the z-axis here and we're going to see if we can create those two front grooves i want the box not to be so wide so we're going to have to scale it along the y something like this g and x and then so i use g and y to move it along the y axis and then we're just going to hit g and z bring it down a bit about here um they are a little thick so I'm going to see S and X to make them slightly thinner and then I'm just going to separate them with P. Uh, yep. So let's go to tab, press A to select all of them, press P. By, so, um, we're going to separate them by loose parts this time and I'm just going to go ahead and move them apart separately. Something to the effect of this and just move them in the center cool then we're going to join them together with p with um control and j to join and now that i like the way that it looks i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing i did before we're going to go to boolean and we're going to select this object good and we can hit shift z to see how it's going to look and i think that's looking okay Oh, let's go shift Z again. Alt H to unhide these. S Z to just scale it up a bit more. I'm gonna lift it up on the Z axis as well. And we're going to hide it. Let's take a look at how it looks. In the camera view, I think this looks really good. Yeah, I think this works just fine. So we're just going to go ahead to you and we're going to hit apply. Cool. Then we can hit Alt H and we can delete this for now. 
So this is the basis of the toaster. All we need to do now is add the feet and the toast. So let's go ahead and just add those right away. I'm going to duplicate this space, this space at the bottom to do the feet. Press G and Z to move it down. Good. Then I'm just going to go ahead and use the middle mouse button and move the whole thing up so I can see the bottom. I'm going to hit Shift and Z. Cool. And then what we're going to do now is that we're going to, we need to select all of this. So let me just move it down a bit more so that I can select it. And we need to select all of the front part of this. Cool. And we're just going to go ahead and press G and Y to move on on the Y axis. Let's bring it down a bit. Cool. And then we're just going to go ahead and select everything on one side again. About here. And we're going to hit G and X to bring it back here. And that will make our first foot. Press zero to go back. I'm going to hit G and Y, bring it down a bit, put G and X to bring it to the side a bit. Cool. And I'm going to hit S and Z to scale it up a bit. Oh, just before I scale it, let's bring the origin to the center of the volume. I'm going to hit S and Y and Z, sorry, again. And then put G and Z to bring it down a bit and G and Y to bring it to the side a little bit. Good, hit Shift and Z to go back to the viewpoint. It's a bit big, scale it down, and we're just gonna duplicate it and move it along the Y axis with Shift and D to duplicate. So just move it along the Y axis a bit more. We've got something like this. Good, and then we're just going to hit Shift and Z. We're going to duplicate these two. Um, G and X. After we duplicate, we Shift and D. And um, I think we can move it up back. We can move it back a bit more. Cool. And then we can just go ahead and um, join all of these feet together with Control and J. So if I go shift and Z, yeah, this looks about right. Okay, um, these are a bit, these can come in a bit further. So let's go G and, G and X and let's move it in a bit. Cool. And now we can shift Z. Yeah, I think this is about right. Move it about, see how it looks at the front. Oh, let's go ahead and bring these back up again so that they're truly underneath this structure. And G and Y, bring it to the forefront. Yeah, yeah, this is about right. Cool, and then we just need to do the toast. So I'm gonna call the modeling of the toaster, this one section, and afterwards we're just gonna go ahead and model the toast, and then we can get into the animation of the, um, we can get into the coloring part after I model the toast. All right, so we're gonna move on to the toaster. Let's go ahead and just go to the top. I'm just using the middle mouse button, um, holding it down and, and rotating it to pan the view. Good, I'm just gonna go ahead and select um, this right here, I'm just selecting the edges of the inside of this groove and I'm just going to duplicate that with Shift and, with Shift and D and then I'm going to press G and Z to lift it up cool, that's the duplicate and I'm just going to go ahead and just scale this in a bit uh, let me just check to see what the toast looks like, about the size then we're going to extrude it so with everything selected, we're going to press E to extrude. Take a look at how that looks. That's a bit on the larger side. Let's go ahead and just scale it down a bit. So extrude it and just, and just select everything and scale it down. In fact, let's just go ahead and 
um, press shift and Z and just select all of this right now and just um, separate them from the main mesh here by pressing P loose parts and then now it's easy selectable cool and then we can just go ahead and select all of this and scale it a bit more cool I'm gonna scale it along the x-axis specifically uh, I'm just gonna squash it along the x-axis so I'm gonna press G and X to squash it on the x-axis and then we're gonna select this top side of the mesh here all of these edges at the top and just scale it up a bit to about here then press GZ to bring it down and you hit shift and Z to see how that looks I think this is a good size for the toast G and Z okay I'm just going to extrude it one more time what well not one more time one time and then I'm going to extrude it um, one more time about here cool and then what I'm going to do is select like we did in the beginning with the toaster I'm going to select these edges out here and we're going to hit ctrl and b for the bezel for the um, bezel and I'm going to bring it over right so that we have a close to perfect um, semicircle here cool we have the rounded shape so we just have to create the indent then we're going to select these edges here these two edges here and I'm just going to go ahead and press G and Z I'm um, not G and Z sorry S and Y to scale this in a bit okay I've been pretty loose with the bread but you can spend more time to make it more curved I'm going to duplicate it and move it to the side again and we have our bread here so next um, we're going to go ahead and just Oh, I shouldn't have deleted these parts, but it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and just create our circle here. So I'm going to select these these two lines right here. These two edges. So I'm going to create the handle that does the popping. And then I'm going to hit Shift and S. And I'm going to say Cursor to Active. And that should put the cursor in the center, hopefully. Shift and A, oh sorry, cursor to selected. Right, and I should put the cursor in the center. Good. So that Shift S and then cursor to selected. Good, to so snap the cursor to the selected area. Then what we're gonna do is go to Shift and A while we're in object mode. Shift and A and we want to create a mesh circle. Cool, and that's gonna put a circle right at that point then we're just going to scale in and already we can see how this handle is going to look good then we're going to press shift and z and i'm going to press tab to go to edit mode then we're going to move from edge select to vertice select cool and then we're just going to go ahead and select the vertices that we want to be truncated here or to be cut sorry i'm just going to delete it here vertices I'm going to join this one with F to create a, um, to complete the, the loop. I'm going to put Shift and Z to see how that looks. And press G and Y to move it back a bit. Good. Then I'm press Tab to go to Edit Mode. A to select all the vertices. F to press, to, to start a face or to in, insert a face. Then I'm going to press E to extrude along the z-axis good then we're going to press zero to see how that looks and that looks just fine so these are all the elements for modeling the toaster cool so from this point on we're going to move on to the colors so and we're going to use the grease pencil and the colors for the toaster Good, now that we have our toaster modeled and our camera set, good, and our toast ready to be popped, uh, the next step is to convert this to a grease pencil object. So first, what we're going to want to do is press tab 
good to go to edit mode and then we're going to just go ahead and do some selection here so we're going to select these edges here so i'm going to select the whole of this edge here and then i'm going to do the same here select the whole of this edge good we're going to take a look at the camera view and you want to select the last most edge here good so we're going to select the edge holding shift all the time so that we're selecting more than one edge here we're going to select the edge of the toaster slots good we're going to do the same here select the edge of the toaster slots and we can just use the middle mouse button to pan around and we scroll the middle mouse button to zoom in making sure that we have all the edges here Let's select these ones as well cool this looks about okay we want to select these edges as well so it's one two so select these group these group slots here make sure all of this is selected good select all of them select the bottom ones too cool and uh, select this one here uh, select this one at the back there's a gap between them so we can fill in this gap afterwards good go to edge let's take a look at how it looks i think this looks okay oh is this a missing edge here yes it is good and then we're just gonna go ahead and shift and e oh sorry control and e sorry and we're gonna mark seams this is important for our next step so now that we have the seams marked we're just going to go ahead and go to um, object and make sure you're in object mode to do this and we're going to go to convert and convert to grease pencil good and we see it does some conversion here but we have some problems that we have to solve first so first up we only want it to export seam edges Good, so those are the seams that we've just created. And we can see what we have here. We have the seam edges here, and it's looking a lot like a toaster in view. Good, and this is an excellent tool to convert your 3D objects. We can see that everything that we selected from the back and the front is also selected and converted. So it's a full 3D experience. We did this line here because this is going to show in the render. All right, so we have it here to, to define the shape. This is really good. We want the offset to be about roughly 1.5. And um, the reason for this is that if we don't offset it a bit, it's gonna interfere with the mesh underneath it. And that's gonna be, that's gonna create ugly artifacts. Cool, so we have this here. And this is an excellent way to convert your 3D objects into meshes, nice and simple and we can go ahead and do some editing now so because we need to add some colors now cool so let's first convert all of these into grease pencil objects so i'm just going to go ahead and do that i'm going to cut the camera and then we're going to come back to all of these being grease pencil objects just go ahead but if you join the patreon you'll get the full video without these cuts in case you want to see all of the steps but um, for this YouTube video, I'm just going to cut some of these steps here. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to move into coloring this grease pencil object. I have the toaster in front of me and um, I'm just going to open up the... The um, Inkscape file that I have for the thumbnail so I can see the colors. So let's put in this at the bottom. So it's off screen, but I can see the colors. So we're just gonna go ahead and color this. So the wonderful thing about this, oops, sorry about the noise in the background. Let me just lift this up. But the wonderful thing about this modifier now, which I love so much, or this, this, this convert that we've done, is that the fields can be changed and that makes it 
um, super awesome to you, so you know. So, what we can do now is that we can hide the strokes, and we can see here, though it's kind of faint, I hope it shows on camera, the, these thin grey lines indicate where the fill lines are. So we can begin to fill this in. So let's fill in about two sides here. So I'll show you what I mean. And then we'll just skip into the full colored section because it's repetitive after this. But I'm just gonna show you how I do it. So the first thing we want to do is to get our color. So I'm just gonna get my color from the Inkscape file. Then I'm gonna come to this file select this area here we're going to select a new material and we want to make sure that we have fill ticked and we're going to go to hex and paste the hex code and then you're just going to hit assign and that assigns the color to this fill area here and essentially we're just going to repeat the process for the entire shape let me do it for the stroke so you can see how the stroke is. Just gonna hit Alt and H um, to show the stroke again. And we're gonna select this stroke here now. And the stroke has a color of a green, a kind of dark green. So I'm gonna go to the Inkscape file, just copy the hex code. And we're going to go into this area where it has stroke on the right. And we're going to go to the hex and paste hex. And we see that all of the strokes have turned for this um, mesh. This part of the mesh has turned green. So essentially for every piece here you're going to import the color for every fill section here. Now there is a bit of finicky sort of... Um, you have to do a bit of meandering through this mesh because because the few objects overlap it's kind of difficult to access some of them so i'm going to demonstrate the problem here so if you want to access say this field here it's going to be difficult to access this field because the vertex points or the curve point in this instance the curve points they they overlap and as such are kind of difficult to get so you have to move things around and move them back but if you enable snap or the snap up here to realign the vertices you should be just fine so you'll have to kind of move stuff to be able to select everything at once it's a bit tedious but I think that this is absolutely the best way to um, absolutely the best way to add 3D or to make your objects 3D make your 3D objects 3D um, grease pencil to convert them to grease pencil it's the best way because it's just it gives you far more control and then we can always use the snap tool make sure it's on vertex and we can just snap it back and if that's not working because it's not working so wonderful then you can always use freehand if this doesn't work out for you and essentially we're going to color the whole of the toaster using this method so it's going to skip that because that's repetitive and then we'll take a look at the next step after we do that. Good, so. Okay then, so we have our fully colored object here, grease pencil object. All of the colors have been added, the toast and everything. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to add the curve colored embellishments that we see in the front in the preview. And to do that first, we want to create an empty. Good, so we're gonna create an empty with shift and A, making sure we're in object mode. Shift A, and we're gonna create a arrows empty. This is important because it gives us a Z, Y, and X axis directionals, which is gonna help us to um, position this. Then we're gonna hit shift and Z to go to wireframe mode. 
and I'm going to press 1 on my numpad to go to this front view and we're going to position this empty in roughly the center of the grease pencil object but slightly to the front of the front surface here so I'm going to press G and Y to move it slightly in front let's take a look yep let's rotate it to see that it's slightly in front this is about good um, let's bring it back actually a little bit more and this is it then I'm going to press 1 I'm going to press shift and Z and the next thing is that we're going to press sh shift and S and this will give us some, some options to snap our cursor to the selected and that would be the empty good so we don't have any need for this empty right now so now that we have the cursor selected here we want to make sure that we select our grease pencil object make sure that we're selecting the a layer that has the appropriate color that we want which is this color right here good um in fact which color do we want for this one now let me just quickly check okay we want um the curve color i think it's this one yeah this material here that's why you should name your materials but enough for that for now so now that we have that selected and we're on a visible layer i'm just going to go ahead and go to draw and we're going to select this arc the curve here with the double bend it won't be on this by default we're going to select curve and it's going to go ahead and draw this curve right now and i'm just essentially just following the same bend path or a similar bend path than what i had on the image it won't be perfect exactly the same but it will be pretty close good and then what we're going to do is just we're just going to press e to extrude up on this path and um oh we want to go down sorry not up my bad we want to go down not up and um bring this down a bit and then we're going to press e and just we're just following the outline of our cutout here as best we can E, E, I'm just pressing E each time to extrude, and then I'm gonna press E again and come here. I'm gonna do a bit of bending here. Cool. Then I'm gonna press E again to extrude the line each time and bring it to the end and bring it to the top about here. We can press enter to apply cool and if we take a look at this now press zero to go to camera mode we can see that it is indeed in the right position just slightly in front now we can just take our time and just move it back along the z-axis here making sure that you have select mode for the stroke points i'm just going to put g and y bring this back into position zero and that will give us this curve look um, that curve color pattern that we have and so we just do that for the bottom and we do that for the top as well so I'm just gonna cut and go to that because it's the same process just duplicated but essentially you want to make sure that when you're drawing on a on this an object generated um, in grease pencil like this that's in 3d space you want to make sure that your viewpoint is looking directly at the surface that you're going to be drawing on you don't want to look at it from an angle or else it will give you a angled stroke pattern um, that will look off and be difficult to sort of readjust All right so that's why we set the origin point and that's also why we made sure that we're in this perspective here looking directly at it cool so i'm just going to go ahead and move on to the full colored version so if we take a look here this is what i did prior and um 
let's just add all of our viewpoints here and delete the one that we did just a while ago good so this is what happens when we color everything together we get something that looks like this which is essentially what we had so now we're going to move on to the pop animation of this toaster pop tutorial Alright, so we're going to move on to the animation of this toaster. Good, so first up, we're going to create an empty. I have my empty here. But you create empty by going Shift N empty, and I've used the arrows empty. So after that, we're going to parent this object here and the two toasts to the empty. So make sure you select everything with Shift and select the empty as last and hit Control and P and you're going to select parent and keep transformation cool I've already done it already so my empty controls the toast cool then we're gonna go ahead and add some keyframes so the first keyframe is gonna be on the Z location all keyframes are gonna be Z location sorry it's gonna have it on keyframe 1 then the next keyframe is gonna be on keyframe 8 and we're just gonna pull the Z, the toaster down by pulling the empty down to about here. Insert keyframe. Then we're gonna hold this key to about frame um, 25. Good, so just insert another keyframe. So it's the same one, just holding it down. And then at about frame 33, or frame 30, sorry. We're going to have it pop up and we're going to give it a bit of an overshoot. So I think somewhere here is about good. Good, and then we're going to have it return to rest at frame 33. So let's have it to return to rest here. Cool, so we see it goes up, goes down, and it pops. Good, so the animation looks kind of plain. So we're gonna stagger the toast a bit, one of the toast. So we're gonna select this toast here and we're gonna have a keyframe at, we're gonna have a Z keyframe at frame 30. Good, and then I think it's about frame 30 as it goes down. And at this frame here, about roughly 30, we want it to go up slightly higher. Placing a keyframe so it goes up slightly higher. All right, but first, as it before, just before the pop, about frame 26, I'm going to have it at its original size, original place have it go up slightly higher so it goes up a bit let's put it at frame 33 instead good and then we're going to have it come down slightly after so we're going to have it return to its original position about frame 37 good. and then just play about a bit, a bit so Stagger looks a bit better. Yeah, so I think this looks okay. Yeah. Now, the only thing I change is that it pops a little high. So let's bring it down a little bit more about here. See so that does better. Yeah, that's much better. Good, and that makes our toaster pop animation all right and that concludes the tutorial i hope you enjoyed it this tutorial had a lot more to do with the grease pencil 3d objects i think that's important um, for tutorials moving forward we're going to be using this type of methodology when dealing with animating and illustrating grease pencil objects you know i prefer it than the line art modifier but we'll also go over that as a tutorial as well in a separate tutorial 
So, until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design and move on. Later.